Hello everyone, welcome back to Andrina's Creation. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own cassette treat boxes. I recently posted this order and I had a ton of questions asked how I made them. So I'm going to explain you to you exactly how I created them and how I designed them. So are you ready? Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is open up your software. As you guys know, I use Silhouette Studio. Can you use Cricut to do these? Yes, you can, but I'll be using Silhouette Studio. The first thing you need to do is go ahead on to my website at andrinascreations.com and you're going to purchase the template. I'm going to be using the Kit Kat box, but you can use this with any other chocolate box. I have a specific tutorial just talking about the chocolate boxes. I currently have the Kit Kat box, the Hershey box, um, Reese's, Twix, Butterfinger, and the Three Musketeers, Three Musketeers, I think, as of now. But you can use this with any other templates of your choice. I'm just going to use this one for my order, and I'm going to make it look as a cassette box. Then after you purchase the template, you, after you purchase, make before you purchase, make sure that you have the software that you're going to be using, either Silhouette or Cricut. Um, if you are a Cricut user, you can use the SVG template. And if you have Silhouette, you can use the Silhouette file. But if you have a business edition, you can also use the SVG template. After you purchase, make sure that you also provide the correct email because that's where your digital download is going to go to. After that, you're going to go and download your template. After you download, it's going to come in a zipped folder. You're going to extract the folder. After that, you're going to go inside of your software. Do not double click on the file. And I'm going to repeat that. After you extract the folder, do not double click on it. You need to go inside of Cricut or inside of Silhouette. And I'll link down below also the specific uh, tutorial for the, kick, for the uh, chocolate box after you download an extract then also I'm gonna go to creative fabrica and I'm going to download this one it's gonna call the audio cassette tape SVG this is what I'm going to be using to design my box I'm gonna do the same thing I'm going to download this and I'm going to extract it and then I'm gonna go inside of my software now I also have the link down below I am affiliated with creative fabrica and if you become a member for the first month you only pay one dollar for the first month and after that you only pay nineteen dollars a month all right you do not have to become a member to purchase from them you can just individually purchase um, individual items but I am a member so I'm able to download everything from creative fabrica Okay, so I'm gonna go back to Silhouette Studio. Now keep in mind, I have Silhouette Studio Business Edition. Silhouette Studio Business Edition also is a one-time payment if you do wanna use Business Edition, and I'll leave the link down below. But Basic Edition is free, and you do not need a cutting machine to use this software. So if you just wanna design and print and cut by hand, you can. I'll leave all those links down below. All right, so like I said, the first thing is to purchase the template and then also go ahead and get the cassette tape uh, from Creative Fabrica. After you download an extract, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and quickly show you how to download an extract here. So once you purchase, you're going to see that you have a zipped folder. I'm going to click on the one that says the Kit Kat box. So I'm going to double click on it and it's going to be like this and it's gonna say extract all. So I'm gonna click on extract all and go ahead and select the folder that you want to extract it to. So I'm gonna browse and I'm going to select the folder and just click select folder. I'm gonna click on cancel, but after you click on that and extract it, it's going to extract. Now I'm going to show you really quick If you double click on the SVG, and just keep in mind that the SVG is going to have this right here, it's gonna say Microsoft Edge. That is the SVG one. So I'm just gonna double click on it. When you double click on it, it's going to look like a blank file and I'm getting a lot of emails saying like the templates are not working. I'm clicking on it. I'm clicking on the SVG and it's a blank file. You cannot double click on the file You're because it's not going to automatically open in the software. So 
either if you have silhouette you must go inside of silhouette go to file go to merge and bring in the file from here so i'm gonna go ahead and look for the folder Again, I have business edition, so I'm able to click either on the SVG or the silhouette file. So I'm gonna click on the silhouette file and click on OK. And now my uh, template is here. If you have Cricut, open up Cricut. After you open Cricut, go to upload and upload your SVG from inside of Cricut. Okay, I hope that helps. Now after that, this is the template. And again, I'm not gonna go into detail about the template because I already have a separate tutorial specifically talking about the template. I'm going to use this one right here. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to delete this one. I'm only going to use this part of the template. And then I'm gonna go back to file. I'm gonna go to merge and I'm gonna also bring in the cassette. So I'm going to click on the one that says cassette tape SVG and click on OK. Now, also, if you have a basic edition of Silhouette Studio, you cannot open an SVG. If you only have a basic edition, you can only open up Silhouette files. So if you're trying to use SVGs, you're not going to be able to open SVGs using the basic edition, okay? The basic edition is the free one. All right, once I clicked on the SVG, now I have these four cassettes. I'm actually not going to use that one that one and that one i'm just clicking delete on my keyboard now when you first open up a uh, silhouette studio your mat should be on 12 by 12 now if you're going to be uh using 12 by 12 leave it on 12 by 12 but if you're going to be cutting on 8 by 11 cardstock you're going to go first to your first print uh paper icon on your right it looks like a piece of paper that's called your page setup where it says media size and it has it on 12 by 12 you can actually change your uh media size to 8 by 11 if you're going to be using 8 by 11 cardstock i'm going to leave 12 by 12 for now and then let's just work on the cassette first. Hopefully you can guys follow along. Now on this one, on this cassette, I am going to click on it and let me zoom in. The zoom in and the zoom out button is up here is the plus sign and the minus sign. So I'm just zooming in. And while my entire cassette is selected, you're just gonna click somewhere here on your screen and drag your mouse to select everything. I'm going to right click and ungroup and right click and ungroup again. I want everything to be ungrouped. Okay, now, while this, I'm gonna just click on one. I'm gonna go to my fill icon and let me move everything to the side so you're able to see. Your fill icon looks like a paint palette and then you are going to click on it. Click on something on your cassette and just change the color of it. Just like that. And then I'm gonna click on the white part and I'm going to color that a lighter orange. Then I'm going to just select everything and color it the colors that I want. Now these circles, I also want them to have a black outline. So I'm going to select, select one circle, hold down my shift key and select each one. And then I'm gonna go to under my paint fill. It looks like a lot of, lines that's called your line style right now the thickness is on one and i'm going to go on the color and i'm going to change that to black because i want a black outline on the circles and i'm actually going to go up on the thickness maybe to 1.5 and then these four circles i'm actually going to select them as well and then go to 1.5 and click on the color black because I want them to also have a black outline. All right, and then from there you're done. You can actually type on here if you want to, if you want to type any words, you can just you're gonna have to click on the A on your left then your A on your right, click anywhere on your screen and then start typing. And then after you're done typing, you can add your words here. I'm actually not gonna do that. I didn't type anything. So then my orange cassette, it's done. Then I'm just gonna click, select everything, right click and duplicate. And I'm going to select all the orange and group it together. And my orange one is done. And then you're going to repeat the same steps for all the colors that you want.
if you do not have a color here that you want to be able to use all you have to do is go on google and then you're going to go ahead and look for a color that you want to use so let's say i want hot pink click on images just gonna click on one i'm going to right click copy image go into silhouette right click and paste then i have this color i'm actually going to change this red to hot pink so while i'm still in the icon here i'm going to click on the dropper and click on this pink and now that changed to that and then i'm just going to use that color instead of red all right now after you are done creating all your colors and this is just me for this order you don't have to create as many colors now you are ready to start putting it on your template now this is the main base let me ungroup this as well um this is the main base where everything's gonna get glued on which is the pink then the blue is where you're going to be cutting if you want to cut out and gold or silver accent or glitter is up to you and you also don't have to do that part like i said i explained everything in the chocolate box tutorial you can actually put all your design here and not have any accents or if you do want to have a layered look you can um, cut this out of, like I said, gold or silver, which I'm going to be using silver. And then this one right here, it's where I'm going to actually put my cassette design. So again, this is the main template and I'm going to be cutting this out of silver. And then I'm going to be putting my design here. I'm going to select my entire purple template and then I'm going to rotate it because I want my design to go this way. I'm also going to do something different. This is totally optional. You do not have to do this. I'm actually going to right click and ungroup this and let me zoom in really quick and just select this part here, right click and duplicate. Oh, hold on. Let me undo and hold, select both and right click and duplicate. And let me And this is just being very extra. Again, you do not have to do that part, but I'm actually going to be cutting this out of holographic vinyl, HTV vinyl to layer on top of here. Um, and you're going to see that at the end. All right, so now let's continue. Like I said, I am going to be cutting, uh, I'm going to be putting this design on top of my purple template or my purple pieces. And I'm going to have to color all these pieces to each cassette that I'm going to be working on. Now, as you can see, the cassette is an oval rectangle and I need them to be a uh, actual rectangle so it can look like it's on here. I don't want them to have an oval. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top part here and let me not confuse you as much. Let me put this on eight by 11 paper and well, let me just leave it on 12 by 12 for now and then I'm actually going to make these smaller so they can all fit here on the 12 by 12 for now also, I want to point out, looking back at the order, I actually printed everything on the blue layer. I didn't add everything to the purple layer when I actually did the order, but you can do either or. I actually didn't even use no accent, so I didn't get to use the purple layer here on the template. And then I'm going to be, I do have business edition. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to merge. And I, I mean, sorry, no. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to save as, save to hard drive save type to a png so it can have a transparent background and then i'm going to name them uh, cassettes after i save them i'm going to click on ok and then cancel and then the reason why is because i need them to be a solid image so i'm able to crop them in this part of the cassette and i'm going to show you why i had to save it but before we do that, I'm going to click on this piece that doesn't have the oval opening here. And then I am going to go ahead and change the color to the same orange, right? And then I am going to bring this to the front and size it.
I'm going to select them both. I'm going to go to my transform panel and click on center so it can be centered. And you can see it fits perfectly in there. And now before I group it, let me just right click and duplicate. And then I'm going to group this. So the orange one is done. Now I need to repeat the same thing and color this pink. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps with all of them. All right, once you're done putting everything into a rectangle, now we have to put the same thing on the other side. But remember, this one has the um, curved in the front. The reason why I had to save the images as a PNG, because if I try to put this on here, or let's say I will color it, right? Let me color it yellow. And you can just try to size it down. So you can have that curve there, but then you just bring in the cassette too small. If you wanted to do like that, to me that's too small and I didn't want it like that. And then also let me color this black so you're able to see what I'm doing. Also you can make this a little bit bigger to cover that shape in the back. And then if you try to select everything and then go to your modify panel and crop. That's what's gonna happen if you try to crop it. So um, I just saved everything as a PNG and now I have this part here. I'm gonna go to file, merge, and go get that PNG that I saved. Okay, because now this is not a SVG, now this is a PNG image, right? this one right here and now you can't ungroup a png because a png it's like an image it's like a one image thing that i have here right and let me zoom out and i'm gonna right click and duplicate this and if you use your eraser tool and just erase one of them they should move you see because you kind of like broke the PNG and now I'm just gonna move this in that there, but okay. I'm gonna have to delete the orange one and I just selected it and I made it a compound path because I don't know why it's leaving those white circles behind. All right, you see I'm still missing the orange one, so I'm just gonna go over here and delete the purple one just so I can pull the orange one to the side and then I'm done. It looks like a lot of steps, but it's really not, guys. Just take your time. All right, so now I have all the colors and if you're only doing one color, it's not going to be all these extra steps. I'm doing just a lot of colors. And then once you create it, just save it and then you don't have to keep doing this all the time. All right, now I need to crop it into this piece. I'm going to right click and duplicate so I have it there. Now I'm going to just size this down, making sure that it's almost as big to cover that piece. All right, now select them both to your modify panel and click on crop. And now, cause you cropped it, now it has that piece there. Now you do have, um, 
here on business edition if you see my black outline kind of cropped out i'm gonna go back to my fill icon i'm gonna go to my um third option in the fill icon i'm gonna go to advanced options and where it says pan pattern i'm going to click on that or sorry i'm gonna go to scale and i'm gonna scale it down just a bit so i can get my black outline back and then i'm gonna click on pan pattern and you're able to move it okay so now you see the black outline around it and if you want a black outline on this one right here because you see that i don't have the black outline you can just right click and ungroup it and just click on that and go to your outline and click on black and now you have that outline there okay let me group that back all right now you're gonna repeat the same steps i'm gonna do one more so you can see what i did Select them both, go to your modify icon and go click on crop. As you notice, I'm missing some of my black outline. So while it's selected, I'm just going to go ahead and click on my fill icon, go to the third option. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit so I can see my black outline. Can you see it? All right, that one is done. And then go ahead and repeat the same steps with each color. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the same thing here. You probably didn't hear me what I said earlier. Now, if I click on the fill icon, click on the third option and click on advanced option, there's a button that says pan pattern. You're going to see like a cross there. You're able to move your design with a pan pattern. So I'm just moving it a little bit up and down after I scale it down so i'm able to see the black outline then i'm going to click somewhere else and then that's it i'm off the pan pattern so pan patterns here and you're able to move your design all right once you're done with that now you have the second part well the back of your box done okay so then this one goes with this one All right, let me say this really quick. They might be looking a little bit different on the screen is because I'm recording this after I shipped the order and everyone was asking me questions, how I made them. So when I already had saved the image, I had saved the image of the original cassettes that I shipped and I just noticed that I actually didn't even do green. I did red and I thought I didn't, but just keep in mind like i'm re i'm recording this after even the customer has this on in her hand and the party is already done all right but let's continue just imagine this was supposed to be green but it's not all right now the next step is you have these strips that go on the side of the boxes you can just leave them just like this and color them the color that there's going to be going so let's say the orange have to be orange so let's say this entire all these have to be orange to go with the orange cassette and then you have to repeat them for each color now i was a little bit extra and i kind of like did a little design to go on the sides of the cassettes and on the top and bottom of the cassette again this is optional again you do not have to do this part either okay so for the little strips what i'm going to do is i'm going to go here to my shapes and i'm going to click on the oval rectangle one and let me zoom in and I'm going to make an oval going down like this. Now I'm going to select it. I'm going to make it uh, convert to path. And then I'm going to go to my internal offset. Click on internal. I'm going to click to my offset icon. It looks like a double star. I'm going to click on internal offset. And I'm going to go down all the way maybe to like a 0 0.010. You might look like nothing's happening but i'm going to select them both and then i am going to make a compound path and now i i right clicked it make compound path now i'm left with this now i need to make sure this fits inside of my rectangle i'm just going to click on it and make some adjustments if i have to select them both go to my transform icon and click on center them both together i'm going to go back to 
my left and click on the lines and then hold down my shift key and I'm just gonna make a line right here and then I'm gonna go to my line style go up my thickness at least to a 0.75 make sure that's color black and then I'm just going to center that so I'm just gonna click on everything and click on center and that's what I'm going to have on my side little rectangles you don't have to do this like I said this is all optional and then I am just going to go ahead and delete this one because I'm not gonna recreate that shape again I'm just gonna select this one right click and duplicate it and now I have the two that I need I'm not actually going to group them yet because I have to actually keep duplicating and change just the color of the back and what I mean by that is I'm gonna right click and duplicate now I can right click and group and let me group one at a time group that one select that one group it together so now it moves as one and then I'm just gonna click on the orange rectangle and change it to the color pink right click and duplicate it and now you can go ahead and do that for each color all right i'm not going to do that right right here so we don't take so long in the video i mean it's already long but yeah I like these long videos if you're still watching go ahead and comment down a blue heart down below if you're still watching to this point all right now for the long rectangles what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and make a I'm gonna grab the rectangle and I'm going to make a very thin rectangle in the middle. Very, very thin. Like that. Let me zoom in. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab a rectangle holding my shift key so I can stay like a square. I'm going to go like this and let me center this right here like that and I'm going to click on that black rectangle go to my in to my offset click on internal offset I'm going to go down to maybe to 0 0.015 and then I'm going to um, I'm going to color this white or uh, pink for now so y'all can see it okay I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it and I'm going to add it to this end over here like that all right now I'm going to select everything my line rectangle and both and all my rectangles and I'm going to go to my modify icon I'm going to click subtract all and it looks like nothing happened, but when I unselect it and click on that pick rectangle, it removed it, and now I'm going to select everything, right click and group it together. And now I'm going to put it here, select everything and center it. And then that is done. And then go ahead and change it to the colors that you need them. All right. For my other rectangle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my oval rectangle and I'm just going to make an oval rectangle like this, very thin one. Make it a little bit bigger. All right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab another one and I'm gonna make one like that. Right click, duplicate it and put it over here. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate this one. And I'm gonna color it pink just so I'm able to see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna make this one really small and put it at the end right click and duplicate and
All right, don't forget that these are three different shapes put together. Let me change the colors so y'all can see it. They're, these are all different shapes, nothing's together. Now, I want to combine all these shapes together, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click everything together and I'm going to weld it. So you see now it's one shape, right? So now when it's one shape, I'm going to go ahead to my offset icon, click on internal offset, and I'm gonna go down to 0 0.10 probably and then I'm going to select them both and I'm going to make them a compound path and now I'm left with this shape and I'm going to make sure this shape fits there I'm going to center them both together. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here back and grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna make rectangles here. gonna make another rectangle and I'm gonna color this one gray and center it and I'm going to right click and duplicate this one and put it in here and center it as well all right, so I'm going to click on this one, click on that other one, and group it together. Click on those two rectangles and group it together. Now I can right-click and duplicate this one. Have another one here. And then I am going to make just a little tiny one and let me color it purple just so I can see it for now and let me zoom in I actually want that white all right so that's what, how this one looks there Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do that. I am not going to group nothing yet because I have to change all the colors again to match everything. All right. So these will be all the pieces basically for one cassette. It'll be uh, five, six pieces per cassette. So these two plus these four strips. All right. And then you're done. Now, if you're going to be cutting by hand, just go ahead and load your paper. Now, I am going to be using 11 by 17 paper. I have an EcoTank 16600 printer, an EcoTank 16600. I'm able to print on 11 by 17 paper. And the reason why I'm going to print on that paper is because I can fit a lot more. Now, if you do not have a white format printer, make sure you go ahead and put your paper size to the size that you're going to be printing. So if you have an eight by 11 printer, go ahead and change your media size to eight by 11. You're gonna go ahead, if you want your machine to cut it, you're gonna have to turn on your registration marks. I like to put my thickness all the way up and I'll probably put on the print bleed and go ahead and start putting all your pieces here that you want your machine to cut. Now, if you have an 11 by uh, a white format printer, like I said, I am going to put mine on 11 by 17 and enter. Now I'm going to go ahead and put all my pieces that I want my machine to cut. Right. And then once you have all your pieces there, I'm going to go to my send tab. And you're going to see that your printer is going to, I mean, your machine is going to want to cut everything out here, like from the inside of your stuff. Just select everything and just click on cut to edge. And now it's going to cut on the outside. 
Now with this pink one, I have to make it a compound path. Oh wait, go back, because it did something wrong. Undo, and release compound path. Okay, once we cut them circles out, and I don't want them to do that, so. Okay, there you go. So I have it there. And then with these pieces here as well, you're going to have to do the same thing. Or if you don't have it grouped, yeah, like right now I don't have uh, my lines or nothing grouped. Let me zoom in. So I'm going to select everything and click on no cut. And then just click on the back rectangle and click on cut. And then group it together. All right, and now you put all your pieces there. Before you have your machine cut it, you must print. How do you print? You go to your printer icon up here. You're gonna click on print. I'm gonna select my Ecotank 16600 preferences. I'm going to select that I'm gonna print from my paper tray. I'm going to select 11 by 17. And I like to print on premium presentation paper matte, standard high. And then I'm gonna click on okay and I'm going to print all that stuff out. If you only have an eight by 11 printer, make sure you have that eight by 11. Make sure everywhere is supposed to be the same. Your media size should say eight by 11. Here at your printer preferences, it should say 8 by 11. And on your printer, it should also say 8 by 11. Three different spots, your paper size should be matching, okay? After you finish cutting everything out, like I said, I was going to be a little bit extra. Now I'm going to turn off my registration marks and I'm gonna go ahead and put my media size to 12 by 12. And I am going to be cutting out these pieces here out of HTV. If you didn't know, you are able to use HTV. HTV is heat transfer vinyl. It is a vinyl, you need to apply heat to apply it. Usually it's used for clothing or um, fabrics and stuff like that, like your shirts, your hoodies, your hats and stuff like that. But I, if you didn't know, you can also use HTV for cardstock. You're just going to need heat, like a small iron to apply it or even your heat press, but I'm going to be using a small iron. So I'm just gonna right click and duplicate this and I'm going to be putting this in the front and in the back of my cassette. So I need four for each box. So you're gonna go ahead and duplicate this and now you're gonna go ahead and over click send. And my vinyl settings is a blade of three, force of 10, speed of six, one pass. And that's what I use for my HTV vinyl. And then I'm going to load my vinyl to my mat and send that to cut. For my cardstock, if you do not have, if you do not want to use the paper that I'm using, you can use plain white cardstock, either 65 pounds or 100 pounds, and you can also print on white cardstock. The settings that I like to use to cut is blade of six, force of 26, speed of four or six, and two passes if it's thick cardstock. All right, so don't think because you're not using the same paper that I'm using, you are able to use whatever paper you want to use. Even if you want to use glossy paper, make sure any paper that you use is compatible with your printer. All right, once after you print and cut, we're going to be right back. If you have never used HTV, make sure that you cut your HTV upside down, meaning shiny side down. And then after you cut, you have to weed it out. I'll leave all the links down below of the weeding pen that I'm using and also the HTV that I'm using here. But you can use any HTV. I like Caesar Easy Weed HTV, but again, I'll leave the links down below. And do not forget, you need to put your HTV upside down. Now I'm just gonna cut out each individual piece. I'm gonna put it on top of my cassette and then I'm just gonna put parchment paper on top and use my little iron. I'll leave that little iron down below, but I bought it at Walmart, but you can also find it on Amazon. Don't forget to put parchment paper to have that protective uh, sheet there between your cardstock and your iron. Okay, once you're done ironing all your HTV, you're gonna cut out your main base out of any color cardstock of your choice. I use a 100 pound black cardstock, and then I'm just gonna fold where my score marks are at, and then I just glued everything on top of my black cardstock. As you can see here, I actually didn't even use the blue part of the template, which I said that you could have cut out of 
accent either gold or silver i actually put my design in the blue parts of the template so i hope you didn't get confused mines are not gonna have no accent gold or silver And I don't think I mentioned it, what kind of glue I'm using. I'm using my own brand new glue and Gina's Creations Craft Glue, which you can find on my website. But at the moment, I'm out of stock. But always check out my website, andrinascreations.com. I should be in stock very soon, hopefully. But you can use any other brand of glue or you could use your double-sided tape as well. Alright guys, this is how everything turned out. If you like this video, don't forget to comment down below any other videos you would like to see from me. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Also, if you're new here to my channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell to get notified every time I upload new videos. If you're not in my Facebook crafting group, it's called Andrina's Creations Crafting Lounge. Feel free to answer all three questions to get approved over there. If you would like to order anything from me, follow me on Facebook and Instagram and send me a message at Angina's Creations LLC. If you don't have social media, email me at Angina's Creations at Yahoo.com. All right, guys. Hope everyone's having a blessed day and talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.